In this session, we will going through the physical layer architecture of ODU. If you have the understanding of 5G NR physical layer structure, then this will be easy to understand. So in ODU, there are some physical common control channels and also shared channels. These will be in the downlink and the uplink as well. There are some reference signals. You will also see PDCCH. PDCCH physical downlink control channel carries the downlink control information like the information for scheduling and the source grant to the UE etc. PDCCH carries the information of resources which need to be allocated to the UE. PDCCH can have one or more CCE control channel elements depends on the aggregation label used in 5G. We mark 5G here because this was introduced with the 5G NR technology which allows higher bandwidth and spectrum for heavy broadband services. In LTE, there was no such aggregations. So you can consider that there is only one aggregation label or CCE means 6 RBs in LTE. But in 5G, you can have aggregation label like 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 and respective RB requirements are 6 RBs, 12 RBs, 24 RBs, 48 RBs, 96 RBs. Another important factor is core set, control resource set. PDCCH has different functions as I listed some here. PDCCH is used to notify the UEs about the formats of slots. PDCCH also takes care of the transmission of power control commands for PUCCH and PUSCH channels. PDCCH also takes care of active bandwidth power switching for the UE based on their demands. Now let's talk about the physical shared channel in the downlink which is PDSCH. PDSCH mainly carries the user information in the downlink. This user data gets transferred in the terms of transport blocks or generally called TBs. These are also called the data payload. So the information comes from the upper layers like MAC layer. From MAC layer, user data comes in the terms of transport blocks or TBs. When these transport blocks carries down to the layers in the downlink, there are some mandatory actions which need to be followed. For example, CRC is added here at first, also called cyclic redundancy check. Why the CRC check? So the information in the TBs which are coming from the higher layers, CRC will check the information for any error. So if there is any error detected, then some type of error correction methodologies will work like here LPDC which is low density parity check codes. So LDPC will try to correct the information with the help of parity checks likewise. The next stage is rate matching. This will match the frame size of transport blocks from the higher layers like MAC with the lower layers. Here the HARC hybrid ARQ will also work. If any information is repeated in the transport block, then it will notify that the information is not needed to be resent. HARC also work out when any information in the transport block is not received completely and in that case will ask the high layers to resend the data again. Then the next step would be the scrambling which provides the interference protections and privacy for the transmitted data. It plays an important role in securing the secured and reliable communication of information between the base station means G node B and the user equipment UE or device in the 5G network. When there are many different cells reported with a similar signal strength, then this identifies that which PCI to consider and which PCIs to ignore. So that interference won't impact much. Next stage would be the modulation. In NR5G, the UE can be allocated any modulation scheme from QPSK to 256QM or even higher like 512QM or 1024QM in the future. This modulation scheme is allocated depends on the type of size of user data requirement. Also depends on the radio conditions of course. But whatever the modulation scheme is final, the user data or the transport blocks will be mapped to the respective modulation scheme in the lower physical layer through different multi-antenna precoding. Let's quickly talk about the reference signals as well in the downlink. There are different type of reference signals which are being used for different prospectives like the modulation reference signals DMRS, face tracking reference signals PTRS and channel state information reference signal CSIRS. These reference signals are being used for the channel estimations in the downlink. Downlink reference signal DMRS is used to have the estimation of signal strength and what is about the channel quality. 
phase tracking reference signal is used for compensating the phase noises, especially in a very high frequency bands and millimeter waves and with multiple antenna array structures. CSIRS channel state information reference signals received by the UE and it tells about the estimation of interference. In case of advanced antenna concepts like multi-beam, massive MIMO, etc., where beam management needs to be done. In the next session, we will brief the common control channels and shared channels in the uplink. So stay tuned for the updates. If you did not subscribe till now, then please do subscribe to learn and grow community for regular updates. If this video is informative, then please like this video, comment on video, and don't forget to share. Thank you for watching.